So we come to Harvey's first fact, and that is the effective dose in dental imaging with a CBCT are far lower than the rest of medicine. But that shouldn't give us a license to use a CBCT whenever we please. What about comparing radiation dosages from outside of medicine and dentistry? Well, there are two main causes, terrestrial radiation and cosmic radiation. Putting this into a, a tangible co concept, a flight from London over to New York and back is 56 microsieverts. It was interesting to get the opinion from a cancer research trust, which looked at this and described this trip does not increase the effect of having cancer, even for frequent flies. And this has been shown in the research that pilots who have this cosmic radiation dose exposed to them are not at any increased risk of cancer compared to lay people. In the UK, the annual background radiation dose a member of the public receives is around 3,000 microsieverts annually. Simon's second fact was that the effective dose in dental, dental imaging, CBCTs, are far lower than natural background radiation. The next point Simon went on to make was looking at the statement from the American Association of Physicists and Med in Medicine, their AAPM. Now I'll quote their statement where they describe where the threshold should lie for medical and dental radiation dosages and concerns. So the evidence supporting increased cancer incidence of mortality from radiation dosages below 100 millisieverts, that's the equivalent to 100,000 microsieverts, is inconclusive. And what they described was how we shouldn't be highly speculative and discourage these predictions based upon a hypothetical harm. And that brings us to Simon's third fact, that the effective dose of dental imaging are very low and are very unlikely to cause or be involved with cancer. 